We are now getting to what is probably my favorite award in a year like 2020, our scumbag of the year. And let me tell you, narrowing it down to just four choices was almost impossible. There are so many people who deserve this title in a year like 2020 that I I really struggled to just choose four. And when you see how many honorable mentions there are on this list, you will truly grasp how difficult this was for me. Um, so I chose four somehow, and these are my nominations. The first nominee for Scumbag of the Year is Donald Trump. Now, I think that, to me, this was a no-brainer. He did so much damage in this year, uh, more so than other years, that he couldn't not be here. And this is actually who I think deserves the title overall. So, first, he fumbled when it comes to COVID-19. And as a result of his negligence, hundreds of thousands of Americans are dead. That's on Donald Trump. Additionally, he became more and more authoritarian this year, more so than other years. He sent militarized police to Portland to kidnap protesters. On top of that, he threatened to use the Insurrection Act. I mean, these are authoritarian things. He also used his postmaster general, Louis DeJoy, to cripple the U.S. Postal Service during a pandemic, knowing that millions of people would opt for mail-in voting because he thought that that would give him an edge in this election. And when he actually lost this election, he's refusing to concede. He tried to steal the election. And if he was successful, this would end democracy in the United States as we know it. And, you know, he's still lying. And he got enough people in this country to think that he's the rightful winner of this election. I mean, if that isn't scumbag worthy, then nothing is. So he's the one who I had to nominate, and I hope he wins. Now, of course, Mitch McConnell, that's my nomination. And so long as he is the Senate Majority Leader, it's easy to put him in this category because he does so much damage. He really is the lowest common denominator. Like when talks regarding stimulus and economic relief fails, nine times out of 10, Mitch McConnell is the culprit. He's the reason why it didn't get past. And when we need people to have relief, uh, when they're struggling, when they're going hungry, now is not the time to be playing politics. Because if you do, if you obstruct, if you don't let votes pass, you're playing politics with people's lives. And that's that's a unique evil. So of course, Mitch McConnell is a nominee. And this might be a controversial choice, but I chose Matt Gates to be a nominee. Now, let me tell you specifically why this is the case. There's a lot of Republican politicians that are garbage, but he did something that I think is so beyond the pale that he deserves to be nominated. He literally called for American citizens to be hunted down like terrorists and murdered as if they were terrorists in the Middle East. I'm referring, of course, to his tweet uh, where he directly calls for Antifa to be targeted. And he said this and then he doubled down. Now, Tom Cotton also called for this, but nobody was as direct and explicit as Matt Gates. And to have a sitting member of Congress call for the extrajudicial murders of American citizens, this this is disgusting. And the fact that he didn't get that much scrutiny for this, the fact that this wasn't that controversial really tells you how desensitized we are to how terrible our politicians are. So for that alone, he's a scumbag. So I nominated him. Now, this next one is going to uh, probably get me in hot water with <laughs> any remaining libs that watch, the, watch this channel. Uh, Barack Obama. Now, let me explain to you why he's a nominee. He killed not just one, but two major social movements. Had he not picked up the phone in March, we would very likely see a different president going into 2021. He single-handedly killed Bernie Sanders' movement by getting Pete Buttigieg and Amy Klobuchar to drop out. And then when he basically had Bernie Sanders on the ropes, he had a private conversation with Bernie Sanders and possibly encouraged Bernie to drop out as well. I mean, Obama coronated Joe Biden. And I mean, he's lucky that Joe Biden ended up winning. But still, you deprived us single-handedly, perhaps, of a president who actually cares about us. And on top of that, when the NBA was planning to strike over the Black Lives Matter movement, he got them to stop. A meeting with Obama got the NBA to back down. And on top of that, after he did all of this, he was uh, parading around the country as if 
you know, he were a hero promoting his shitty new book. Now, he's already a multimillionaire. He has a mansion. Why he thinks it's important for us to read like the 20th biography that he's writing about himself, it tells you how narcissistic he is. But I mean, people need to realize that Obama is not your friend. He is your enemy and he's the final boss of liberalism and you have to fight him if you truly want change. Having said that though, those are my four nominees, but let me tell you my honorable mentions. Derek Chauvin, for obvious reasons, Kyle Rittenhouse, Lindsey Graham, Amy Coney Barrett, William Barr, Elizabeth Warren, Mike Bloomberg, and Pete Buttigieg. But before we get to the results, let's look at the history of the scumbag award. So back in 2019, the winner of the scumbag title was Mitch McConnell and the runner-up was Donald Trump. Now, in 2018, Donald Trump was actually the Humanist Report scumbag of the year, and Paul Ryan was the runner-up specifically because he blocked a vote on ending Saudi Arabia's genocide in Yemen, or more specifically, us ending our support to Saudi Arabia as they carried out a genocide in Yemen. And in 2017, Ajit Pai was the scumbag after he repealed net neutrality, and Trump was the runner-up. And in 2016, hilariously enough, Hillary Clinton was the scumbag of the year because she lost what should have been a really easy race. Her hubris led to us getting Donald Trump as president, and I think that was scumbag worthy, and the audience agreed, and the runner-up was corporate media for assisting her ultimately in this loss. Now in 2015, Donald Trump was the scumbag of the year, and the runner-up was Debbie Wasserman Schultz, because at the time, she was doing everything in her power to sabotage Bernie Sanders when she was supposed to be a neutral arbiter. But having said that, the results are in, and you decided, the biggest scumbag of 2020. So in fourth place, we have Matt Gates with 150 votes. He made it by this time, but he will win this title in the future if he keeps you know, uh, going the way he's been going. Uh, in third place, we have Barack Obama with more than 2,100 votes. And that means that the scumbag of 2020 came between Donald Trump and Mitch McConnell. But the Humanist Report has decided that the biggest scumbag of 2020 is once again, Mitch McConnell with more than 7,000 votes, which means that Donald Trump is the runner up with just under 4,000 votes, meaning that Mitch McConnell won decisively. Now, when it comes to our Twitter poll, Mitch McConnell is the winner still with 38%. Obama came in second with 34.2%. Trump came in third with 25.7%. And Matt Gates came in fourth with 2.2%. On Patreon, Barack Obama actually is the individual who won this poll with 59%. Mitch McConnell came in a distant second with 28%. Donald Trump came in third with 13%. And Matt Gates came in fourth with no votes. Now, when it comes to our YouTube audience, where most total votes were cast, Mitch McConnell came in first with 57%, Trump came in second with 28%, Obama came in third with 14%, Matt Gates came in fourth with 1%, and when you look at the results overall, you can see that the audience was actually somewhat divided. You have Patreon voters being the biggest renegades and choosing Obama as the biggest scumbag, which I respect and admire. But on Twitter and YouTube, voters were pretty much in agreement that Mitch McConnell was the biggest scumbag, although the YouTube audience was much more decisive there. Um, now getting to our comments, Stoned Gentleman on YouTube says, Trump's gonna Trump. Mitch McConnell is a genuinely evil and irredeemable turtle man. The difference between the two is McConnell is actually competent and therefore far more dangerous. I see that. My toes are cold on YouTube says, Rudy leaks fluid and farts Giuliani <laughs> would have been a contender for certain. Uh, Brian on YouTube says this is tough, but now that Trump is executing people to make himself feel tough while 3,000 people a day are dying, gotta go with Trump. Yep, totally agree. Jose Cadena on YouTube says Obama stopped us from having the most progressive president in modern history. Gun and Ballad on Patreon says Obama is the only reason Bernie isn't president right now. Bloody Monday is the only reason that thousands of more people are going to enter medical bankruptcy and our planet is going to be uninhabitable in a decade. Chaotic Human on Twitter says, not sure if I should vote for Trump or for Obama. Sure, I think Trump is by far the greater evil here, especially because of his mishandling of the corona pandemic, but I'm still angry at Obama for his interference in the primaries to stop Bernie. Yeah, and honestly, like you can make the argument that all of them are scumbags, but for me, I actually thought that 
Trump was the biggest scumbag overall, worse than Mitch McConnell, because even though I, I totally agree with the case that was made here, that McConnell is more competent, so therefore he's more evil, Trump was uniquely evil, uniquely competent in the sense that he really made moves to do long-term damage to the country, hence why I thought that it sh should have been Trump. Having said that, though, I only get to nominate. I don't get to decide. I can vote like everyone else, although I didn't vote in these polls. But um, yeah, there you have it. Our biggest scumbag for the second year in a row is Mitch McConnell. And even though I think Trump probably deserved it more, you can't say that Mitch McConnell didn't earn it.